Well, here I am at the United Nations. I'm at the, uh, I'm at the high level meeting. How do you like that for a title on HIV AIDS? I have never taped in the United Nations before. So I'm positively throbbing, pulsating with excitement. And these meetings, they gather hundreds of people, thousands of people from around the globe, and they share information with each other, information they're already familiar with. This is really a vast networking opportunity, a kind of orgy of self-congratulatory expostulations, which everyone enjoys, and, and they come from the various ministers of health, and everyone has a good time. But you know what saves these meetings? is the emergence almost always of a political statement or a political declaration which gives a sense of hope and optimism and focus around which all the countries gather. And there was a political declaration at this meeting. It was uh, agreed to at the opening session of the meeting by all of the countries in attendance. And it has some very good portions, particularly in the setting of treatment and prevention targets down the road, which may make a difference if they're reached. But it has a fatal flaw, which has deeply, deeply wounded and offended civil society and all those groups associated with what they call key populations. And you know those groups. They're gay men and other men who have sex with men and sex workers and injecting drug users and the trans population and prison populations. And, and they've been dealt with contemptuously. They're hardly noticed in the body of the document. And that's of immense significance because those are the populations where the incidence of HIV is rising dramatically, astronomically in parts of the world like Central Asia and Russia. They just must be dealt with. Their human rights must be given credence. They, 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 they can't be criminalized and stigmatized and discriminated against and then not even felt in a serious way in the declaration endorsed by the countries of the world. And you know who's orchestrating all of this. It's Russia and Indonesia and Egypt and Iran and the Vatican. The Vatican. The Vatican that just has observer status. Has anybody seen the film Spotlight? What in the world has, gives Vatican the right to, uh, to comment on key populations? We thought, everybody thought, that the good countries, the progressive countries on HIV, would take a strong stand and would resist these erosions of the rights of, of key populations, particularly at this critical moment in time. But they didn't. They capitulated on the argument that if they didn't capitulate, maybe we'd get nothing at all, no declaration. And some people wonder whether this declaration is worth the paper it's written on. I must say that the good countries are now having second thoughts. They're lining up at the microphone to say, yes, we endorse the declaration, and we're not sorry we did, but we're worried about the contents, and we know that a lot was left out, and we know that the key population should have been given a profile, and we know that human rights should have been more deeply entrenched. It's this crazy business. It was as though, uh, and I think they have, it was as though Saudi Arabia has ratified the Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, and then they submit a reservation which says, we agree with getting rid of all the clauses that discriminate against women, except the clauses that say they have equal rights. I must say, I, 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 don't, I, I don't get what's going on, and it gives me a migraine, and I sometimes think that I'm in a psychotic whirlpool. I love the United Nations, but it is capable of strange aberrations, the only thing on the planet more aberrant at the moment is Donald Trump. Can you believe I said that? That was last week. I'm Stephen Lewis.